here, your host of Frugal Fitness TV and author of The Frugal Workout, with uh, Jose Rivera, former world boxing champion in welterweight division, and uh, USANA athletic advisor and distributor, head of Team Rivera. So thank you so much for being with me today. Me. It's an honor to be with uh, such an accomplished uh, professional athlete. And uh, you know, I know the Frugal Fitness TV viewers are very excited to have such a high caliber, uh, high caliber athlete on the show. And uh, I wanted to talk to you today about, you know, during your, your very lengthy and successful boxing career, you know, uh, some of the workout regimens and uh, strategies that you employ to, you know, to have such a good, good record, to have all the endurance and the power and, uh, um, you know, just the, the mental and physical toughness needed for boxing. So uh, tell me a little bit about your training, uh, training routines back in the day and then maybe uh, up to recently. Yeah, um, well I would say back in the day boxing <laughs> it's much different than it is today for me. Yeah. And obviously for, for many other fighters. Right. Uh, even when I started boxing, um, I thought about like, boxing, I was watching the TV, and watching Chu Ray Lander, the very the Ram Armin Hagler, the classic. The, uh, <laughs> you know, the great champions. Yep. And I didn't know amateur boxing existed. Okay. I thought, when I, mean, I said I wanted to be a fighter, I thought I was going to be a fighter. Right. Yep. Right. Um, and then when I went to the gym, they explained to me how the system works. Go to the amateur ranks, you build yourself up. And if you do real good in the amateurs, you can about the Olympics, nice. or yeah. you can then turn pro. Right. And I myself didn't have no Olympic dreams. Not to be an Olympic fighter, I want to be a world champion. Right. That belt that you want to have in my hand. You want the HBO pay per views and uh. Well, even at them, I care about what you got. I have to go. And you got some belts to, to prove it. Oh, yeah, I brought my world champion. <laughs> All right, awesome. So, um, yeah, and basically I started off as an amateur. Your workouts are much different than as a pro. Right. You're only fighting three rounds. Right, so you're not going so those, might, not going the distance with these 15 round yeah. mega fights. Right. Uh, what you're doing is you're preparing your body and you're training and you're sharpening up your skills in the amateur to prepare you for down the line as you grow bigger. But even right. in the amateurs, better you improve, so you, you're training as a step up. And you, you started early, right? You started with were you 18 as a, as or a or younger. Maybe. I was 15. Years 15, old. yeah. I amateur boxing. When I started boxing. So this guy's got you know more experience, as much or more experience than you know almost any boxer out there. This guy's been doing it for a long time. Yeah, I've been for 24 <laughs> years. I, uh, I, did, uh, I had a pro career for 19 and a half years. Just retired about a couple of months ago. Uh, I just decided that you know, I paid my own. That's longer than you know most professional athletes in pretty much any sport you know out there. So that 19 and a half years just as a pro, that's incredible, and uh, it's quite quite a lengthy and successful career as well. Absolutely, yeah, the training regimen uh, went from Plus, you have your 
Oh, okay. So, so you're big that. into those explosive, explosive weights. Yeah. And it's very good for your core strength. Yeah. It builds the speed. It builds and how, and, and I tell you, it's, uh, it's, it's an experience that I would tell anybody you got to try. Awesome. Well, properly yeah. done. Right. You, properly you, done. You, yeah, you see some people do them yeah. incorrectly. They don't get too much out of it, but right. you hear that. If you want to be a world champion, incorporate some kettlebell training, you know, depending on your sport and your goals, right. but most people can benefit from them. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I've seen in the gym where I did my kettlebell workouts. We had golfers, we had swimmers, we had basketball players. We had, so it wasn't just boxing. Or, or we had MMA fighters. Different, different sports trying to, uh, athletes trying to become world champions or champions in their sports. Yeah, and so they, it, core strength. You get, yeah, you get that core strength and uh, total, total body exercise. Uh, you develop incredible strength and explosive power you know, without adding too much cumbersome muscle bulk. Because you know, if you're if you're an athlete, if you're a fighter, you don't want to be weighed down too much with you know some of the, in, some of the uh, muscle bulk that you know I've, I've had in the past. And you just you're just like this, and you can't walk, and you can't move, and you're just useless. So that that's not going to help. Kettlebells, good stuff, and uh, that's why I have my clients do all those. Uh, kettlebell swings and the clean presses, uh, not just for my own amusement, sometimes, but, um, so that's excellent, and uh, I'm sure your workouts kind of evolved as you got older and you got more educated and experienced. Uh, do you do any, uh, or did you do any weight training during yes. besides kettlebells? Yeah, about, uh, when I added uh, more on a like, lighter scale, yeah. for a lot of reps, right. speed, endurance, explosiveness, and not necessarily a lot of most okay, great. And uh, that, you know, I, I always tell all my clients that I, I have them do pretty wimpy, especially by your standards, like cardio boxing, just for some upper body cardio, it's different, stress relief sometimes too. And like boxers are one of the, uh, some of the best athletes on the planet because they have to have, they have to have the endurance, they have to have the upper body and lower body endurance, the core strength, the power, the explosiveness, you're always moving. Plus, you're getting hit by punches and you're dodging punches. So, you know, it's hard enough to do all those things when you're not getting hit. So, <laughs> so I, I make sure they respect boxing and fighters and the, the whole profession. <laughs> it makes boxing so unique, I feel my eyes, is that you really have to have that mental toughness to do it. Because you can be a marathon and then you come in the ring and after a round or two, you're going to be gassed. Done. Because you, you're using parts of the body you're not used to run, you know. So, and like you mentioned, you know, you gotta have that mental preparation, you know, it's like, I want to hit you, but I'm trying to avoid you hitting me. So it's, it's like a test match to try to set them up and, and try to work your way into not throwing the combination and looking for flaws. So, so it's, it's, it's a, a lot, the mental game plays a lot into it. You know, so, and so you can be in the best physical tip-top shape in your life, but if mentally you're broken down or something's up, you know, you're, you may be taking advantage of Very quick. I can't imagine. I, I, you know, I don't think I have the physical capacity, which is some of the uh, toughest of any sport on the planet, because I mean, you mix everything. But you know, mental strength and toughness is just that's what separates, you know, just any any boxer, an amateur from a champion. So, um, and then after your workouts, did you uh, you really? Get in some post-workout nutrition to make sure that you got the most out of that workout. Absolutely, absolutely. And actually, for me, um, I grew up with no nutrition knowledge, no nutrition background, um, and we are basically a product of our upbringing. So I come from a broken home, a single mom, that's where I was young. So I just found survival, and for me, survival, survival was my, my Yep. I eat it. I eat it. <laughs> McDonald's, right? Burger King. Way to survive, and you know what you knew at the time. What you knew at the time. But that and what, I got, what I got away with. <laughs> yeah. And you get away with it when you're young. Yeah. But then when I got older, it kind of caught. You know, it cut to the point where I went from working out and being healthy to never getting sick to now all of a sudden I started getting sick a lot. And especially before fights. Right. What started happening was that I was working out so hard, putting yep. a lot of stress on my muscles and on my body, and I wasn't getting the proper nutrients to yeah. recover. And the immune system breaks and down, you're overtraining, exactly. trying to make weight. 
to that. But it's a lot, you're right, that lowers your so defense. The scare, the scare for me was when I ended up in uh, Las Vegas trying to uh, fight for the number one spot in the world, and the moon ring in the world, and uh, um, the day before the fight, I ended up in the hospital, three back and five deep, and then later, the doctor comes and says, hey, we waited a few more hours, how are we? So that's how the crew did, and hydrated, and sick. Yeah. I mean, I had the sinus flow, I had everything. You know, and uh, so that, that was a very eye opening for me and stuff like that. When I came back home, I, I went to see a sports physician who specialized in working with athletes, or, but also works with everyday people and stuff like that. And Optimal the, performance and the nutrition that you need during high stress. Like, uh, Optimal performance, but also optimal health. Yeah.